Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell the truth about silver. Today is Sunday the 19th of March 2023 and we're publishing our Gold and Silver Weekly Update for the week ending the 17th of March. I'm very sorry it is late this weekend but a lot happened last week. We saw gold and silver prices soar beyond all expectations and we wanted to calculate this weekend where we see those prices moving next week. Why did they soar? Let's take a look. Okay, first just a quick reminder that links to our gold and silver forecast published at the start of the year is placed in the description box below. So what happened last week? Well, gold rose an unbelievable $121, rising from $1,867 to 1,988, having hit a high of 1991 and a low of 1867. Now that's a rise of 6.5%. In sterling terms, it was up 82 pounds at 1,634 pounds. And in euros, it was up 111 euros at 1,867 euros. Now silver performed better. It actually rose 10%. It rose $2.06, rising from $20.55 to $22.61. It has been as high as $22.72, so it really closed not that far off its high, and a low of $20.55. In sterling terms, it was up £1.51 an ounce at £18.60, and in euros, it was up 1.90 euros, not far off two euros, at 21.24 euros. Obviously, because it performed better than gold, the gold to silver ratio fell from 90.1 to 1 to 88 to 1. Now, the difference between gold's high and low was a considerable $124. That's compared with $61 the previous week. And the difference between silver's high and low was $2.17 compared with the previous week's difference of $1.73. Now, we did say in last week's forecast, quote, a lot of potential excitement this coming week. And then we gave our forecast. I'll mention the outlier range of 1775 to 1950 for gold and 1850 to 22 for silver. Well, both moved outside the top end of our outlier range. Gold by an additional $38 and silver by an additional 61 cents. But it was an exceptional week, a dramatic performance. Now, the reason for this, we'll go into once we cover some of the other financials, Bitcoin soared as well, as did most cryptocurrencies, up $6,773 at $27,109. Just think, it was only a couple of months ago where it was around eighteen dollars or $17,000, and most of us were predicting it to fall potentially to as low as 10000 It could still do that, of course, but it's doing well at the moment. Equities were higher, save for the Dow. The Dow closed on Friday at 31,861. That's down just 48 points. But the S&P 500 closed up 55 points at 3,916. And the Nasdaq did quite well, in fact, up 492 points at 11,630. Good news for us on the oil front, unless you have oil shares, of course, they were considerably lower. Brent crude closed at $72.97, that's down $9.81. And WTI crude was also down over $9, in fact $9.94 at $66.74. The dollar was weaker, down 0.87 points on the week at 103.70. Well, we said this week would be exciting, but not even we thought it would be quite as energetic as it proved to be. And next week will more than likely be just as interesting to watch, particularly Wednesday. So what did actually happen last week to cause such a significant rise in the gold and silver price and also in cryptocurrency as well? Firstly, the dollar weakness contributed, but it's the threat of a banking crisis with the likes of Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank of New York, Silvergate, and now Credit Suisse, which I am reliably informed will actually be taken over by UBS and this will be announced either this evening or early tomorrow morning. And that's UK time. It'll be different for the United States. Certainly before markets open. 
Gold and silver were strong all week, but Credit Suisse announcing it was nowhere near as well capitalised and strong as it previously thought really tipped the scales, particularly towards Friday. Rumours escalated, therefore, that the Fed, which meets and declares its interest rate decision on Wednesday, will not raise rates at all, even though many anticipated they would go up by up to half a percent. I'm not of this view that it will be half a percent or zero. I believe it will go up a quarter of a percent. Now, I could be wrong, but the minute the Fed is seen not to continue with its anti-inflationary policy, we shall have more damage than any benefit derived by holding off rates. Especially bearing in mind that the core CPI figures announced last Tuesday were a little higher than anticipated at 0.5% for February compared with expectations of 04 We did in fact produce a video on Tuesday entitled Gold and Silver Saw on Good CPI Data and Lower Rate Rise Expectations. And I think people thought when we used the word saw it was a little extreme. And it was up until then, but not by the end of the week. And we've placed a link below. Now we see heightened uncertainty has fueled large swings in the yields across the curve as the market exhibits the hallmarks of a dovish Fed shock. Short end yields have collapsed, the dollar's weaker, and gold is doing, as someone quoted, a moonshot as peak funds rate prices have declined by almost 100 basis points since Chair Powell's testimony to Congress. However, we don't think they're going to be quite as dovish as many believe. Now, looking at silver, it has moved in line with gold, only slightly more bullish. Not surprising, bearing in mind it has lagged gold for the past six to seven weeks. Now, technically speaking, it has broken above the 200-week EMA and the 50-week EMA, which would normally suggest, from a technical point of view, an upward trend. Now, that said, this past week has not really been based on fundamentals, but fear of a banking crisis undermining the US dollar, undermining the banking sector, undermining financial markets as a whole. The main beneficiaries? Precious metals and cryptocurrencies, of course. Now, this coming week we have economic data being announced but by the United States, but frankly, the only thing that will matter next week, or this coming week, will be the FOMC decision on interest rates, and then Fed Chair Jerome Powell's comments thereafter. Don't forget or neglect those comments. Now, if we're right, and UBS saves Credit Suisse, and regulators instill enough confidence that they can cope with any further disruptions in the financial markets, in a few weeks' time, things may very well get back to normal. However, in the interim, we shall see much volatility until this crisis dies down. If it does, that is. Some believe it won't. Someone who I'm not going to mention has already been saying this is the end. Is it the end of the banking sector? No. Banks are in the main far better collateralized than they were in 2008 and 9. Could there still be problems? You bet there could. And for some banks. It's for these reasons our forecast for gold and silver is relatively broad, as although they both have potential to go much higher, the minute the perceived crisis is over, they will undoubtedly fall back, and significantly so. So next week, we envisage gold trading broadly between 1920 and 2020, that's $1,920 and 2020, with 1900 to 2100 as outliers. Could partially peak even above that, but it, in our view, would be only momentary. We envisage silver trading between $22 and $24, with $21 and $25 as outliers. We do think it's going to be tough for silver to break that $25 limit. It's going to be an exciting week, so hold on to your hats. Thank you so much for listening. Please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, press the bell sign. I may produce this video again under a different thumbnail and headline just to capture the YouTube algorithm because at the moment they have restricted our coverage and we are effecting changes very shortly to overcome that. Thank you for listening. Have a safe, enjoyable weekend. A prosperous week ahead. Don't be FOMO'd in to unnecessarily buying those cryptocurrencies or necessarily gold and silver. Unless, of course, you are certain 
that things are going to get much, much worse.